how to build an advanced 8-bit computer inside Minecraft. Um, in the last video we pretty much completed the entire ALU. All that's left to do now is oops, add the shifter, which we'll be doing in the first part of this uh, this video, and then add the ALU decoder, which will go around here somewhere. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for this episode. But before we get into that, I'd just like to say one thing. Um, believe it or not, what we have just built is probably one of the most compact and efficient ALUs ever made. Um, this can do everything which I've said in the previous videos in only 15 blocks of length. So that this can do addition, subtraction, and all the logic gates, and division by two, multiplication by two, when we add the um, a shift on the end, um, in just 15 blocks of length. And this is probably my best ever design of an ALU. So uh, yeah, I'd just like to put that out there. If you're not learning some uh, some second-rate garbage, you're actually um, are learning how to build a very good, very powerful ALU which hopefully will be ready for 1.5, which is what I aim this computer to be. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's that was just a little thing I'd like to mention. Um, so yeah, and now let's get building the shifter. Uh, for the shifter, we do need to get rid of the, all of these signs. Um, hopefully you know how to count in binary by now, so that shouldn't really matter too much. And let's remember how to build my shifter. Um, let's, you know, I'm not going to have a bi-directional shifter, I think that is pointless, I'm just going to have a single shifter which can do right shift, so division by two, because multiplication by two, uh, which is like shifting it up one to the left, so left shift um, can be done by um, sending a plus, uh, how would it be, yeah it's just like Say it, sending A through, then saving it in the register, then sending A through back again, and I'll have and then adding it, and I would have the effect of like increasing it by itself. Uh, so yeah, that's that's how you do left shift. That's not too difficult. But right shift is harder, so that means we need a dedicated shifter. So come to your first bit and build out four. I think one, two, three, four. Let's, let's do five for the measure. And touch bits on them all. And now, if we think, we'll leave that as a spare block here, we need to place the piston, go in that way, like that, and then block up like that, and that should delete that, like so. Now we want to come to our second bit, we'll do pretty much the same thing. So now we've got this, we can select our two positions as always, come down here, select this one, come all the way up there, select that one, and stack this thrice, oh no, oh no, double slash, stack three. Okay, so now that's our shifter built, I think. And our outputs have been moved over to the one. So, oop, no, 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 no. So, if we just bring out one more, so like this. Take all of your outputs and bring them down to the same height just for uniform sake. Right, 
Right then, so this is actually nothing fancy, it doesn't actually use any logic, it just uses um, pistons cutting or allowing signal through. So if we just cut a one coming through there and a one coming through there, we have that coming through, which is exactly the same as our input, it's just kind of like shifted over to one block so not shifted like moved over one one block in position like it started there and it's ended up here but uh, it's still in like the same that it's it came in as the second bit and it's coming out as the second bit that's what I'm trying to say one second a little bit clear no I want a bit of a rain um, but now if we plus and press right shift they all shift over one like so and if we goes back. Uh, yeah, so that's how it works. So that's it working, sorry. Um, do I need to iron it works perfectly, it fits all the way. Uh, yeah, let's just go put that there. Right then. It worked smashingly. Let's just show you how this works. Okay, so let's get rid of that and let us get rid of that also. So we have a 1 coming through on the first bit. As you can see, nothing is um, blocking it because this piston is retracted. So it comes through here and it comes through here. But when we plug this on, it stops it. And actually, if we were to be completely correct, we'd have this and this would be called the underflow. And that would be an error. But I'll explain that in a minute as well. Okay, so. So this is how it works, so one comes through and is allowed through here and up to here. But then when we flick the lever, this piston is now activated so it cuts off this wire and instead allows it through this one. And since it's been shifted one too many to the right, uh, this is called the underflow. If it was shifted one too many to the left, it, was called the, it would be called the overflow. But since it's like coming back under the first bit, this is the first bit so it's come like under it, this is called the underflow. So that's how the first one works, but you can't just have this ca that like pattern uh, copied all the way across. You need a slightly alternating one. So as you can see with this one, if we have a one coming through, uh, two coming through, sorry, second bit, it comes through here, and it's allowed straight up here because this pis this piston is powered by default. Hence this uh, due to this torch. That's then allowed up there and down here. When we flick our lever, this piston is retracted because this is now off. This doesn't bud it because it's not one ahead, it's like two ahead. Uh, so there's no bud is formed. And then this, instead of going up there to the left, it goes up there to the right. And that has the effect of shifting it one to the right. So there are the two, uh, the two like, bits which make up one segment. And then that can just be stacked nicely along the remainder of the bits. So uh, yeah, it's really easy to build the right shifter, and the left shifter is pretty much exactly the same, just uh, slightly uh, different. Like the torches are where the pieces, would, uh, the torches are where the like non torches would be, and vice versa, and so on and so on. Let's just add in our input block. So we have that, that, and we can label it right. Oh no, I've done it to the side. Right shift. There we go. So now we have every single function completed in our ALU. Ah, bother. I knew I'd done this one. Oh no, that would that would bud those. We don't want that. Okay. Um, it does look a bit tacky having <laughs> this really compact thing and then. Shift, uh, bringing a shift on the end, and it adds like a third, an extra third of the um, third of the length onto it, which is a bit of a pain. I'm pretty sure there are smaller shifters, but this is my own design, so I'll stick to this one. So yeah, now we have completed our whole ALU. Woo! That's it for the actual ALU building. We'll have to do the decoding part, but ooh, <laughs> all the zombies and all the vettings. Bye bye. Uh, so yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, that's it for the AOU.
um, with build the decoder shortly and I will now check to see how long I've been recording and we'll be right back. Okay so I'm back and I realise that uh, what I've just recorded in this episode is only 10 minutes long but I don't want to bore you with extra details and stuff and I like to keep it in fairly small chunks so that'll do for this episode but one thing I'm going to point out is that um, having watched it back I realised that my sound was all the way up at 30% so everything's a bit loud except my voice which is a bit quiet so uh, please don't hate don't hate yeah um, don't give me any grief for that there's no need I, uh, I realised but I can't be bothered to be recording so as long as you can still hear me while it's on YouTube it's all good so yeah please stick around for the next video and like comment and subscribe